Hi everyone, my name is Dipali Kumar and I'm a transplant infectious disease physician. And my main goal is for the next 10 minutes is to tell you about immunizations that you need as uh, transplant uh, candidates or as transplant recipients. Uh, my main specialty is infectious disease and uh, uh, I specialize in preventing infections in uh, people who've received transplants. So, um, there are many vaccines that uh, transplant uh, recipients and candidates should be getting. I won't talk about all of them. I will focus on three particular vaccines today. Influenza or the flu vaccine, pneumococcal vaccine or pneumonia vaccine, and shingles vaccine. So let's start off uh, talking about uh, influenza vaccine. So influenza, I'll write it out here, is the same as the flu. And influenza can make transplant recipients very sick because of the anti-rejection medication, uh, because it lowers immunity. So influenza is uh, very important. It's a virus that circulates every year from around uh, November, December to April, May. And every year in October, there is a uh, flu shot that uh, comes out, and it is there to protect you against influenza. Now, you might ask, how do I contract influenza? Well, you contract influenza by uh, contact with others who are sick. Um, and so it's very important during the influenza season to uh, wash your hands, avoid uh, sick people, uh, avoid uh, people who may cough on you, etc. Now, we don't normally suggest wearing masks to prevent influenza, um, but the best way to prevent influenza really is good hand washing. Now, the next best way is to get your flu shot. So the flu shot for influenza, as I mentioned before, does come out every year, and um, it is uh, made of, uh, what it contains is actual antigens from the, the circulating flu virus. It does not contain live virus. So you cannot get the flu from the flu shot. Now, uh, your physician uh, or your public health unit will have the flu shot available uh, for you, and it is recommended for everyone waiting for, um, either waiting for transplant or everyone who has received a transplant. It's recommended by the a CDC, as well as the uh, American Society of Transplantation. There are many types of flu shots out there, so that's something that I think uh, we should discuss. There is a standard flu shot, and this is uh, what most people uh, will get. There is also a um, nasal spray. So the nasal spray is uh, actually a live flu shot. And it is something that, uh, as a transplant recipient, you should not get because that actually does contain live influenza vaccine. The standard flu shot um, comes in um, a couple of different types. One is uh, your regular shot. The other is a high-dose flu shot. The high-dose flu shot is recently developed and is uh, meant to be given to those over 65. The reason it's given to those over 65 is that uh, those people actually respond uh, less to the, to the regular flu shot. Now in the same way, if you've received a transplant, you also respond less to the regular flu shot. Um, so uh, there has actually been a research study recently published that shows that the high dose flu shot generates more protective antibodies in people who've received transplants than, uh, the, than the regular flu shot. So um, ask your doctor to see if you should actually be getting uh, the high dose flu shot instead of the uh, regular dose flu shot. Now, um, very important, even if the high dose flu shot is not available to you, at least get the regular dose flu shot. You may have heard of people getting the flu regardless of having had the flu shot. That does happen because in, again, in People who've received transplants, um, they don't respond very well to um, uh, flu shots. But there, again, has been a recent research study that shows that the flu shot is partially effective. So even if you got the flu 
despite having the flu shot, it will protect you from going to the intensive care unit and uh, from getting pneumonia from the flu. So very important. So that's, that's influenza. I'm going to move on now to um, pneumonia vaccine. So pneumococcal or pneumonia vaccine. The, the pneumococcal vaccine is actually a vaccine directed against a bacteria called streptococcus or strep pneumoniae. This is the most common bacteria that causes, uh, that causes pneumonia. And transplant recipients are more at risk for uh, strep infections than, um, than uh, non-transplant recipients. So, um, there is a vaccine. There are actually two vaccines to prevent uh, pneumococcal infection. And the one is called Pneumovax, and the other is called Prevnar. Pneumovax has been around since the 1980s, and it's recommended for all tr uh, transplant recipients, anybody over 65 years old. We have a lot of experience with Pneumovax. However, Pneumovax, um, did not work very well in uh, children under two years old. So for that reason, there was a newer vaccine developed called Prevnar. It used a different technology so that it, it was uh, actually better in creating uh, protective antibodies. So Prevnar was actu actually came out in the early 2000s. Initially, it was just meant for children under two. However, um, there was a research study again done using comparing Prevnar to Pneumovax in transplant recipients. And it actually found that Prevnar um, induced higher levels of antibodies in, um, in adults uh, compared to Pneumovax. So the recommendation now is actually to get a dose of Prevnar if, you're, if you are a transplant recipient, but also continue to have a dose of Pneumovax. And the, I'll tell you th what the reason is. The reason is that that uh, Pneumovax contains 23 types of strep. Um, it contains antigens from 23 types of strep, whereas Prevnar contains only 13 types. So if you get the Prevnar, which, develop, you know, which is more protective than the Pneumovax, you're only getting protection against 13 types of uh, the strep. So to get protection against the additional 10 types, you need to get the Pneumovax. So the recommendation uh, made by the CDC as well as by the American Society of Transplantation is to get both vaccines if you're a transplant recipient. Now the last vaccine I'm going to talk about is the shingles vaccine. So again, uh, shingles is a, uh, a rash that comes out on, on the body and uh, it is actually the same virus as the chickenpox virus. You know that when you get chickenpox, the virus remains dormant in your body for life. And as you get older or your immunity declines, if you've had a transplant, then, um, uh, then chickenpox reactivates and this is termed shingles. Shingles is a very painful rash and people have, uh, can have pain for uh, months and months after having an episode of shingles. So there is a shingles vaccine. There are two shingles vaccines available. One is called uh, Zostavax, and the other is called Shingrix. Zostavax um, has been around since about 2008, and Shingrix just was uh, licensed in late 2017. Zostavax, however, is a live vaccine. It contains live um, shingles virus and is not recommended if you've already had a transplant. So not for post-transplant. However, if you, have, if you are still waiting for a transplant, uh, you can get Zostavax. Um, but uh, because it's a live vaccine, the recommendation is actually to wait uh, three to four weeks before um, you proceed to transplant to, in order to clear the live virus from your system. Um, so, but after transplant, you cannot get this vaccine. Shing Shingrix is a newer vaccine that's been um, recently approved. Shingrix is for anyone over age 50. Um, 
50 or equal to 50. Um, and uh, it can be given before or after transplant. We have lots of information uh, to say that Shingrix is very protective in um, people who have not had a transplant uh, that are over 50. In fact, it's about 97% uh, uh, protective against shingles. Um, and so, um, but however, after transplant, we don't, so post-transplant, we don't have a lot of information. So we don't know how well it will uh, protect you against shingles uh, if you receive it in the post-transplant situation. So we are still waiting for more information on that. We know that uh, people with transplants do develop antibodies uh, when they get uh, Shingrix vaccine, but we are still waiting for some uh, safety and efficacy data. But definitely, if you're waiting for transplant, you can get either of these vaccines. Um, ask your doctor which one uh, they recommend. But remember, if you do get the live vaccine, you would have to wait uh, to get your transplant for about three or four weeks. So to summarize, I've talked about three vaccines, influenza, pneumonia, and shingles. Um, it's very important to protect yourself as you go into transplant and also after transplant. Um, remember, the best time to get your shots is actually before transplant if you can, but if you've already had your transplant, it's still good to get vaccinated and protect yourself against uh, these very important infections. Thank you.